the bane of my existence. Troubleshooting mixed model problems, because they happen a lot. So let's review real quick. Optimization. When we have complex models, we cannot, we don't have a simple equation to compute the model, like the mean or something like that. Instead, what we need to do is we need to ask a computer to help us a little bit. And so we use optimization algorithms where we ask the computer to find the optimal solution. And what we do is we give the computer parameters like a slope and an intercept or that sort of thing. And then we give it a loss function. For example, the likelihood function. And what the computer will do is it will audition a bunch of different values for the parameters and using the loss function, it will settle on the values of the parameters that yields the largest or the smallest loss possible. So when we're talking about mixed models, they use maximum likelihood slash restricted maximum likelihood. Uh, there's something called restricted maximum likelihood. Um, it's complicated and it really doesn't matter for our purposes, so I'm not gonna explain the difference, but it's there. So with mixed models, it's very, 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 very common that they have convergence issues, or it's very common that they have problems trying to find a solution. Usually it's just because mixed models are really complex. And so there are two warnings that I see. So um, I don't know if you remember in R, there's an error and there's a warning. So an error means I can't do what you're asking me to do. And so it just quits. Just pitches a fit and quits. Whereas a warning is just a like a whiny child who does it anyway, but does it with a lot of whining. That's what it is. So warnings are, yeah, I computed something, but you might want to double check the answer because I don't know that I'm all that confident in it. So there are two common warnings that we see when we do when we do mixed models. One is convergence failures, and those look something like this. And what this means is that it wasn't able to find an optimal solution. And what this means is it couldn't find a single optimal solution, at least within the number of iterations that it tried. And you might remember this contour plot where there were multiple areas where there is an optimal solution. Anyway, it might be something like that. The other warning that we might get from LMER is the singular warning. So what this means, um, I'm not gonna go into details of what singular means. Basically, it's telling you there's something mathematically wrong with what happened, and the solution probably doesn't make sense. And very often it means that there's a variance that is zero, but not always. And we're going to see some examples of that in a little bit. And I'm going to show you a bunch of examples of both these problems and why they're happening and what we can do to address them. So let's go ahead and step into R. So I'm going to go ahead and start by requiring blue pill, which is um, not necessary for you. <laughs> um, I'm going to show it to you anyway, just in case you're interested. But basically, um, if you've ever seen the matrix, you know, there's the red pill and the blue pill. Um, and I don't remember which one is which. Uh, blue pill, I think, means that you want to stay in the simulation or the matrix. And uh, anyway, it's playing with the idea. So blue pill is a package dedicated to simulating data. I thought it was pretty clever to call it blue pill after the matrix. Anyway, I'm not going to go into details, but I'll just show you the basics of it. And then we're going to require flexplot because we're going to visualize some things and then require tidyverse because we're going to modify some data. And then we're going to require LME4 because we're going to do some mixed modeling. And I'm going to set the seed. Um, OK, I should probably be transparent about why I'm setting the seed. Um, mixed models are extremely finicky. And sometimes I would get a warning and sometimes I wouldn't. And just to make sure that I always got the same answer, um, I set the seed. And if you don't know what setting the seed means, that basically means when you're doing any sort of random data generation, it gives you the same results every time. So anyway, I'm going to do that. And then I'm not going to explain in detail very much, but this is just me simulating the data. Um, so I'm simulating data set where we have depression, stress, life events, parental depression, SES, and therapy. And then, um, so the first sort of problem that we might run into is model misspecification. If you misspecify your model, you're probably gonna get a singular sort of message. And so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna actually, let's go ahead and look at head D. And so there's our data set. Um, and if we were to look at this, and if you know what you're doing, hopefully you do by now, um, you see 
it's pretty easy to identify what the cluster variable is. Again, it has to be something that repeats. Life event repeats. Uh, parental depression doesn't. Time doesn't. SES doesn't. Uh, therapist does. Uh, obviously, it's going to be therapist, not life event. So therapist should be the cluster variable. But let's say you misunderstood. And I remember I had this confusion a lot when I started doing mixed models. I kept wanting to put the time variable as the cluster variable. And so let's say we did that. What would we get? We would get this mes message that says boundary singular. Uh, and it gives you some help how to figure out what's going on, but we're just going to go ahead and look at, let's see, I'll go summary mod. Um, so we, we basically got intercept variance. That's a 1.6 with five zero or I guess four zeros in front of it. So it's got a very small intercept variance and a very small residual variance. So basically these are practically zero. And so that's often what a singular thing means, is it's trying to estimate one of these variance components and they end up becoming zero. So, um, and that makes sense because time is the wrong variable. But if we were to do it with stress instead, okay, and like I said, I'm gonna have to rerun this from the beginning. There we go. Uh, it was right if I have the right random number generator. And I'll show you in a minute how you can fix all this. Anyway, so if we put the cluster variable in its appropriate place, everything's good. Um, or another way we could do it is we can model time and that's going to work too. So that's one thing. Got to make sure that, uh, you specify your model correctly. Specifically, um, it's most important to make sure you've identified your cluster variable and that you've modeled that appropriately. If you don't know how to identify your cluster variable, I will leave a link in the description so you can figure out how to do that. All right. Another type of misspecification that you might have is that you might try to model let me put this on its own line. You try to, might try to specify a random effect for a variable that can't be estimated as random. So let's look at the math data set. And in this model, we're trying to do mean SES um, as a fixed effect and as a random effect. If we look at this, we see that every school has, uh, so this, the, the cluster is school here, and the mean SES is exactly the same within every school. And so you cannot model that as a random effect because they're exactly the same in all the schools. And so if we were to do this, we would get an error, not an error, sorry. We would get a warning that says it's singular. And if we were to visualize it, it's a little easier to see why that would be. So we're trying to estimate the slope of mean SES on math achievement, but every single individual in the school has the exact same SES score. So you can't estimate the slope. Makes sense. That's, that's what that's telling you. Um, unfortunately, it's saying singular, which isn't very helpful. So instead, so if we instead use SES instead of mean SES and then fit that model, no singular problems. And then now if we look at a plot of that, we get something that looks a lot better. There's a slope for all the individual schools. So nice, we're in good shape. Um, so another reason why you might get um, some sort of warning is if there aren't enough time points if there aren't enough time points for certain clusters. So I'm simulating new data here um, in n per that's that's the parameter. Again, you don't have to understand this part because I'm just completely simulating the data. It doesn't matter how I'm simulating the data, but just if you're curious, um, that's telling us that um, it's telling us that for each of the clusters on average, they have three time points, but the standard deviation is two. So some of them might only have one time point. And if I were to run that and then uh, this right here just counts the number of time points for each of the therapists. And so we got one, like Dr. D has six time points. That's good. But Dr. F has only one. And then Dr. N has only one. And now if we try to estimate this model, we get the singular problem again. And a lot of times if we get these errors, it's, it's a good idea to visualize it to help you see what's going on. And actually, I'm going to run all this from the beginning. So I'm going to go ahead and visualize that and maybe it'll help us see what's going on. Yep, there we go. So um, notice that Dr. F only has one time point and you can't estimate his slope because there's only one time point. And so um, that gives you a hint that, okay, if we don't have enough clusters, maybe we're going to have some problems. Uh, so let me just show you. I'm going to simulate a new data set, but this time we have an average of 12 time points with a standard deviation of three. So if we were to do that and run that model, we don't have the singular problem anymore. So. If you run into a model where each cluster has very few observations, you might run into problems. Scaling. This is a very common and fortunately very easily fixable solution. So um, 
in this data set, if I go ahead and look at head D, we see that uh, depression scores are like nine, eight, seven. So in like the, I think it ends up being like zero to 15 range. And then SES goes from, is in the 50s and 60s. And so they're on very, very different scales. And oftentimes when you have two variables with very different scales, you can run into issues like we see here. So before all the things, all the problems we've had before have been singular issues. Now we have a convergence issue. And that's what that looks like. It says warning message and check convergence, blah, 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 blah. Model failed to converge. So that's basically telling you as it's doing its optimization algorithm, it wasn't able to get to a point within the number specified number of iterations that it was able to stop improving. And so again, that just tells you that there may be something wrong with this solution. So what we can do to address this specific problem of scaling is that we can give them all the same mean. And so what I'm doing here is I'm just, uh, actually I'll put this all on its own line. So I'm taking the data set D and then mutating it or creating new variables. One called SES, which is equal to scale of SES. So scale, all that does is it uh, centers the data. So it gives it a new mean and standard deviation. It gives it a, it converts them to Z scores is basically what it does. And then if we do the same thing with depression and then we run that, fingers crossed. No, we don't because it already ran and it's good. So yay, all we had to do here was change the scale of it and that fixed the problem. So that's probably one of the first things you should try. Now, um, another problem that you might run into is if you're trying to estimate a random effect for something where there's not a lot of variability, you can often get, uh, you can often get convergence failures or singular, I don't remember which one. I, actually, it's probably gonna be a singular problem. And so I'm just gonna simulate a new set of data and here what, so this vector right here, again, you don't have to know this, I'm just, telling you so to make my example more illustrative um, I am specifically setting the stress random variance so this the variability in the slopes is very very small and so if I run that and now I try to fit a model oh I'm sorry got to simulate the data and now if I um, try to fit a model with stress it's gonna say singular but instead, if I decide that stress is going to be a fixed effect, in other words, I'm gonna replace that stress with a one, which just says that only my intercepts are fixed. And if I run that model, then problem solved. So again, if you have a variable that technically could be modeled as a random effect, but there's not a whole lot of variability in that parameter, then try fixing the parameter and then maybe it'll, and maybe that'll get rid of your singular problem. So now I'm going to go ahead and talk a little more in depth about how to fix convergence issues. Um, I'm gonna start with a model that is going to fail. So the problem with this model is it is a big old model. So it's got stress, SES, parental depression, and then it's got two random effects. And it's, it's really not that big of a model, but for a mixed model it actually kind of is. Uh, and so I'm going to step-by-step step show you what I would do to try to fix the problem. So first thing I might do is try to scale the variables. And that's exactly what I'm doing here. Create a new data set that is scaling all the variables. And then if I now run a new model and try that with the new data, I still get a singular problem. Okay. So it was a valiant effort, but it didn't work. So now maybe what we could do Another thing that you could try to do is, especially for your fixed effects, is just ask yourself, do I really need that as a fixed? I'm sorry, especially for your random effects, you can ask yourself, do I really need that to be a random effect? Is it really necessary? Because that's where the problems come out. And so to do that, I might look at some visuals. So I'm gonna put SES on the x-axis and it looks like, oh wow, yeah. Um, those slopes are very, very different. <laughs> so probably not a good idea to fix that one, but let's go ahead and look at stress now. Oh, much better. Yes, those slopes are close to parallel. So I feel comfortable saying, all right, let's go ahead and try to fix stress. And we're gonna do that right here. Go ahead and put that on a new line. Um, so I've got SES, but I've taken out the stress. So now stress is a fixed effect. And if I do that, it's still singular. By golly, what is going on here? And sometimes if you go summary mod, you can see where the problem is. And so it looks like it's having trouble estimating the variance of the intercept. 
Um, but I don't want to change that. And so the final solution that I'm going to mention um, is to try different out. So uh, like I said, optimization is an algorithm. Um, it's a procedure that the computer follows to try to find the optimal solution. And there's lots of different algorithms out there to do this. And there's a default that LMER uses. And some algorithms are going to be better in some situations than other algorithms. And so to try to figure out if other algorithms are going to be better, you can use uh, this command right here, which is all fit. So basically, it's going to fit the model using a bunch of different algorithms. And if I do that, it's going to list um, Bob Yakue. I don't know what I, I don't know what these mean. Nelder Mead. I think that's the default. Um, all these are different algorithms, and it's saying if it does that one, it's singular. If it does that one, it's singular. If it does that one, it's singular. But, oh, oh, we got a solution. Yeah, baby. NMKBW. It does not give us the singular problem. So you know what I'm going to do. I'm going to tell LMER to go ahead and use that algorithm. And to do that, I'm going to create a new variable called control, where I say LMER control optimizer equals this. So this is basically just telling it, use a different optimization algorithm. And then now... What I'm going to do is I'm going to add another argument called control equals control. And if I run that and I run that, hallelujah, bam, we have finally been able to fit the model. Isn't that awesome? What is not awesome is that I spelled success wrong. Um, so yeah, that's a very brief introduction to these different algorithms. It actually can get pretty complicated. I'm going to go ahead and leave a link to a document in the description that shows you um, how to use these different optimization algorithms and also how to increase the number of iterations and that sort of thing. Um, that's just beyond the scope of this video. So with that, let's review. No, we're not. I'm going to invite you to visit simplistics.net. Take a live class from me about mixed models where you can ask me questions, especially about this one, because this is a hard situation. It's hard to deal with convergence failures and singular issues. So if you want to be able to have a chance to ask me questions and be guided step by step through mixed models, then yeah, sign up for a mixed models class. I'd love to see you. Or of course, you could also take a class that is not live and answer questions in the forum instead. And I can answer those there. So now let's review our learning objectives. Number one, why am I talking about convergence problems? because they're super common in mixed models. Mixed models are notorious for having issues with estimation or optimization, whatever you want to call it. Uh, learning objective number two, the two types of warnings you are likely to see. One is convergence failures, which means that it kept trying to find a solution and then eventually quit and gave up because it was taking too long. And the other one is singular, which means it probably has there's something mathy wrong with it. Um, usually that means like a variance ends up being zero, which may not make sense. Reasons we have convergence failures or singularity issues. Uh, one is model misspecification, like misunderstanding, like misidentifying the cluster variable or estimating random effects for something that doesn't actually vary within a cluster. Uh, small cluster sizes, uh, vastly different scales, or estimating a random effect for something that should not be estimated as a random effect. And also how to correct these problems course make sure your model makes sense so your random effects actually vary over time and your cluster variable is properly identified also you can scale the variables so they have the same mean and standard deviation you can simplify the model and usually that means you're taking out random effects and then last ditch effort is to try different algorithms and if that fails too um, I should probably mention this even though it's not gonna help you if all else fails, you can do a Bayesian approach, which I'm not gonna teach you how to do a Bayesian approach, at least anywhere in the near future, because that takes a lot of background to get to that point. But Bayesian models work. So anyway, uh, hopefully you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll see you next time. Peace out.